Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the STIR webinar. Uh, this is five steps for effective paid social media campaign integration. Uh, so we're going to be talking about a lot of different things today. Uh, in terms of questions, if you have them along the way, just write them down, and at the end, we'll be answering um, all questions from everybody involved. For us, I'm uh, the social media director here at STIR. My name is Michael Ray. I've been working in social media for about 10 years across the paid um, space and the organic space, and I work with a variety of different clients uh, here at STIR. I'm Laura Henriksen. I'm the media director here at STIR. I work closely with Michael as well as the rest of the members of our integrated team to oversee strategic development of paid campaigns across digital media as well as traditional media. So where did the idea of this webinar come from? Um, and the simple answer to this question is it came from you. Uh, it came from different clients who would continue uh, to ask us uh, just different questions about social media campaigns and tell us that uh, they were intimidating, um, that it's something they didn't know if they wanted to do. Um, they were asking, how do, we, how do we connect our campaigns across different networks? Uh, should we be doing Facebook? Should we do, be doing LinkedIn? All of it, none of it. Um, and then we had a lot of clients who would say, I've done social media campaigns in the past and they never worked. Uh, what am I doing wrong or is it just not the place for me to be? Um, so this webinar kind of came out of all those questions and we kind of put together some answers. So to walk through our process and theory here at STIR, we're going to do everything under the guise of a fictional client that we've created. Uh, so meet our client, it's Wonderland Resort and Convention Center. This is a convention center and resort destination in the Midwest that targets three pretty distinct audiences. They've got the convention and visitors business, so this could be everything from a corporate meeting to a wedding. Um, they also target the family-friendly vacation audience as well as the kind of couples adult getaway audience. And so we'll kind of walk through several examples throughout the rest of this webinar um, under the guise of this client. So step one, uh, so this is really a five-step process is we walk clients through uh, setting up social media campaigns. And the first one uh, is the most important step, and it's really defining what success looks like. Um, and this is gonna vary from client to client, and it's gonna vary from campaign to campaign. Let me get back there one second. Uh, so the first thing here is just having really crystal clear campaign objectives. So not, hey, we'd like to make more money, uh, or we'd like to uh, increase sales. That's really, you know, it's really hard to define success if you don't have a number around it. Uh, so for the um, sake of this example with Wonderland, being specific, uh, they want to launch in 90 days. Their budget's around $8,000. Um, they want a 5% increase in online reservations, which breaks down to about 150 uh, reservations um, a month. Um, and they want to have five new conferences with an average value of $40,000. So they kind of have split objectives, reservations, and uh, conferences. So as Michael just mentioned, it's really important to have very clearly defined objectives. And one of the ways that we approach that here at STIR is we work the marketing math. So this is just an example of what the first month of marketing math might look like. I'm actually going to start from the bottom of this chart and work my way back up. We know that based on some of the goals that Michael talked about, we know we need about $33,000 in revenue. Um, given the ADR that that typically generates, we know that that takes about 150 reservations. And we know that based on typical start and complete reservation rates for our fictional client industry, we know that we need to have about 450 online reservations started. So from there, we keep working the, the math backwards and we know that we need to achieve about 5,000 clicks to the website from our social campaign. And that's based off of about half a million impressions. So these are just kind of industry benchmarks that we have here. We feel very strongly that the best benchmarks are your own. So that's a very critical piece of defining success for your own campaigns. Right. And this is something that anybody can do. If you know that, hey, uh, to stay in business, we have to increase our revenue by X amount of dollars, you just kind of plug that in and just back <laughs> that information up and saying, well, what does that mean? How many sales does that mean? What's our average close rate? And you just kind of st start stacking on top of that mm -hmm. until you get to a number where you're like, okay, this is ultimately where I need to be. Um, and then you can start going into the individual platforms and um, importing information and seeing exactly what it's, it's going to take to get you there. 
Um, so if your campaign objectives are unclear, then the word success is meaningless. You're going to see we're going to kind of close out each step with a key takeaway slide. And so again, the, the point to take away from this section is that you need to have very clearly defined objectives going in so that that is your guide throughout the campaign to make sure that all of your optimizations, everything you do moving forward is based on determining and achieving those campaign objectives. So on to step two. On to step two. Pick your platforms. Um, so now that you know what success looks like, you know what kind of revenue you need, um, it's time to pick your platforms. And this is something, again, we go through with every individual client. We'd encourage you to do uh, for yourself is pick exactly what platforms you're going to use. Um, this first slide here is just about kind of knowing uh, each network and whether you're a B2B business or a B2C business, seeing where others in the industry um, kind of line up. Um, so if I look here really quick, what's one of the things that should surprise nobody is a lot more B2B companies use LinkedIn versus B2C companies. Uh, but this slide also shows um, that a lot of B2B companies also use Facebook a lot. There's a lot of value that can be gotten out of Facebook ads. And so this is generally surprising to clients who are B2B and they're like, well, we don't belong on Facebook. Uh, you might belong on Facebook as long as it can drive um, you know, towards those uh, success indicators that we defined earlier. So who doesn't love a good treasure hunt, right? So whether you're One-Eyed Willie or one of these fun little kids in the picture, it's really kind of an interesting and fun challenge to find your client or your target audience, excuse me, on social media. So there's a lot to look through. Uh, we're going to show you um, our map in just a second, but you want to consider things like what platforms does your target audience really use the most? Is that platform capable of the type of measurement that you need? In this instance, we know that we're going after online hotel reservations. So is that platform capable of measuring that? That's something we'd consider. You also want to look at how cost efficient the platforms are. As I mentioned earlier, if you have benchmarks from a past campaign, that's the best place to start. But you can also look at industry benchmarks or reach out to sales partners to help determine what the efficiency might be. Um, you also just want to think through, are there any red flags that could prevent you from reaching those campaign objectives. So what we're going to show you next is a helpful little guide that we use for a lot of our efforts and that's a really great platform evaluation tool to help you find your target target audience. We're going to be sending out this checklist and one other tool that we'll get to a little bit later after this webinar so don't feel like you have to try to read everything on the screen right now but this checklist is a really helpful tool to make sure that you're thinking through all the possible factors to determine if a particular platform is right for your campaign. So for our reservations audience, um, this is basically, this is a step that we take to compare each individual network and kind of winnow down to exactly uh, where we're gonna set up a social media campaign. Uh, we probably don't have the budgets to be everywhere. You probably don't either. Uh, so we kind of have to make these calls early on to determine where we're going to go. Um, so for this reservations audience, um, reminder that our goal is 150 reservations. If we look at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, in terms of measuring success, uh, these tools are all really capable of doing that. And so that's kind of an even playing field. When it comes to most used uh, among our target audience, Twitter kind of hops out of the equation here uh, as we're running that. And then from a cost perspective, comparing uh, Facebook, Instagram versus LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn um, can be cost prohibitive from time to time, depending on what, um, what the ROI is set up for this. Um, so in this case, Facebook and Instagram win the day, uh, which is really convenient because they run on the same ad platform. And so as you're creating ad campaigns, there's already built in integration there. And one thing uh, just to point out here, you're just seeing four key platforms on these next series of charts. There's obviously more than four social networks, but just for the purposes of keeping our webinar on track, we're just going to focus on a few key platforms for some of these examples. And for our conference audience, uh, this looks a little bit differently. Um, so the measurement, again, kind of equal across the board, uh, but for being most used by our target audience, which this is more of a B2B because we're trying to get uh, organizations to book conferences, uh, they're using LinkedIn a lot more. And from a cost perspective, uh, LinkedIn actually wins the day here. And the reason for that is because uh, the amount of the conference revenue coming in is roughly $40,000, which we had talked about earlier, 
uh, paying $10, $15 for a click to get potentially a $40,000 sale, um, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, where for a reservation, if we are paying $15, $20 a click to get, say, a $200 reservation, it becomes a little bit more cost prohibitive there. And how to pick your platform. Um, so this is something that we do for individual campaigns is we actually leverage the tool themselves uh, to help us kind of select down uh, if we're kind of straddling between a few different networks and we're curious. Um, so how you would do this is you would actually go directly into uh, LinkedIn ads for LinkedIn um, and you set up your targeting parameters as you would uh, during a campaign. So you'd say, okay, we're targeting United States or Chicago or Milwaukee or wherever you happen to be, uh, wherever your, that target is. And you put in some parameters of what your target audience is. And <clears throat> what you'll see is LinkedIn will kind of spit out a bid, which you're seeing here at the bottom under an estimated bid. So you have an idea right out the gate um, exactly how much it's going to cost to get a click through. If we go back to that marketing math slide, um, this is kind of where you'd start plugging in those numbers and see in that marketing math um, lineup, does it make sense uh, for, in this case, 961 uh, per click um, to have that be the platform that you're choosing for your campaign? Um, we had determined for the reservation audience it wasn't, but this is something you do kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. On Facebook, this looks a little bit different. Uh, so you'd be an ads manager, and what you would do is a uh, similar process, it just looks different. So you plug in all the different parameters of your audience, where you're targeting, uh, age range, you know, specific demographic information. So in the case of this example, we are targeting kind of young families uh, who have some disposable income. So we've separated this out by kind of, um, you know, income and, you know, age range and uh, just some basic behavioral targeting as well. And then to follow that through, uh, we are going to be looking at, um, just from a budgeting and scheduling standpoint, you'd be plugging in information here and Facebook will spit out and tell you, you know, what is your estimated reach? What are your estimated conversions for that individual budget? In this case, uh, we had wanted 150 reservations, which works out to about five conversions a day. And if we look here, that's kind of on the low end of where we're at. Um, so what that means is that you'd, this would be a budget amount that would work uh, for success for this campaign. If you had to increase this budget to three, four, five hundred dollars uh, to reach that conversion level, then it might not be successful uh, for your campaign. So this is just kind of a way to use uh, the estimating tools with, within each individual platform um, to kind of help you work out some of that marketing math and help you determine what platforms are going to be most effective. And you can't afford to be everywhere, um, so pick your platform wisely. Um, so, again, you can't afford to be everywhere. So when you're making these determinations, don't assume right out the gate, hey, we're going to do a Facebook campaign. Uh, do that prop work ahead of time. Uh, determine that it's the right network for you and determine why it's the right network for you. It's going to help you in projections and it's going to help you down the line um, really work towards success. All right, so on to step three, don't forget about organic. In most cases, if we're lucky, there's a lot of elements to any comprehensive campaign. You'll have paid elements, organic elements, um, and within the social space, organic campaigns can really provide a strong opportunity to, as they say here, try before you buy. You have the opportunity through your organic posting and community management efforts to test what messages resonate with people. You can look at the comments and the engagement that you're getting from users and see what the reactions are. And you can take that data, um, as well as image data, things like that, and inform that into your paid campaigns across social. There are some additional things that you can do with that. Um, remember that tracking codes are your friends. So a lot of people um, get intimidated by this aspect of it. You know, what is a pixel? What is a tracking code? Um, you know, so a tracking code is a really great opportunity um, and those codes are available specific to each platform, but it's a great opportunity to place that code early, even during the organic phase of a campaign. What that allows you to do is the platform will collect a lot of really rich uh, website use data, consumer data, based off of people that are interacting with your website 
after exposure to the campaign. So that will give you insight into what they're doing, how they're tracking throughout the site, and it also sets you up for some success down the road. So for example, by placing this pixel early over time and letting it build data, you're able to then segment that data and create new audiences for your campaign. So for example, so let's say a few weeks into the Wonderland campaign, we want to expand our reach a little bit. We're gonna create some lookalike audiences and then build targeting off of there. And that's only something we're able to do with that pixel. Um, so some other ways that you can set your paid campaigns up for success is take those organic campaign learnings and implement them into the paid program. So if you see that the consumer response and comments you're getting in your community are really strong for a particular offer or a particular image or things like that, definitely implement that into your paid campaign. Um, you can also use very detailed UTM codes. So oh, what's a UTM code? Okay, so a UTM code is instead of, in this example, having your ad click through to wonderlandresort.com, you append certain tracking segments to that. So for example, you could append the campaign name, the creative name, information about the offer that you're including. Um, you can attach a parameter to it so that it shows you which platform it's coming from. There's a lot of different opportunities to append the different takes. And what that allows you to do is not just look at the Facebook data, for example, to see how the ads are performing, but the UTM codes allow you to look really in depth at Google Analytics to see what consumers that are coming to your site as a result of the campaign are doing in a really in-depth way. Um, so that should be critical for any organic or paid campaign that you're doing. Absolutely. And this is something that um, I think a lot of people don't necessarily think about when they're setting up a campaign. Mm -hmm. They're saying, hey, we're just going to take these images, here's our copy, and we're just going to kind of run this through the cycle and see what the heck happens. Uh, but if you have um, you know, a more sophisticated campaign and there's a lot more writing on it, yep. uh, this is a step that definitely makes sense. So say you're testing two or three different images organically, people are responding to one, that's the one you build your creative off of. Yep. Um, so it's something that it's it's an extra step doesn't take um, you know any out-of-pocket money It's just all kind of time here and it's really going to help you out in the same from um, On the UTM code side is just having that that those kind of additional learnings attaching it to uh, You know those organic learnings. So as people are clicking on you know individual links that you're just posting to your site you can track their progress throughout the site and so you kind of have this roadmap so that when you set up your campaign you know how people are going to behave ahead of time um, and that way you can kind of help them along the way and nudge them in the right direction knowing how people tend to behave on your height on your site it's an extra step that can really help you later on uh, in terms of having this additional learning that's going to make your campaign on the paid side just all that more effective so to close up this section to win on social you can spend a lot of money and outspend the competition or you can outsmart them and doing things like using detailed tracking codes, placing your pixels ahead of time, um, and implementing organic links into your paid campaign is a really great way to outsmart the competition and set yourself up for success from the very start of your paid campaigns. So step number four, uh, gathering your assets. So <clears throat> step number one, we defined our success. Uh, step number two, we kind of picked our platforms. Step number three, uh, we are really testing everything organically so we know these are kind of the images we want to go with um, and we have kind of some of that parameters and those roadmaps set up for success. So now we're going to gather our assets on the paid side of things. Again, this might sound like a lot of preparation uh, for doing a paid social media campaign, but all these little steps kind of work together. Um, they build this foundation for success for your campaign and for future campaigns as well. So as you're doing a campaign, um, assuming that you're going to be doing two, three, four, five throughout the course because they're going to be wildly successful because you've done all these awesome things, um, you have that foundation in place and it's going to kind of help you all the way down the road. So knowing your networks and what their strengths are and basically um, just playing to those is really going to help you out as well mm -hmm. in not using the same image across every single platform. There are a lot of companies that do this. I'm sure you've seen them. You see their ads everywhere. They look identical absolutely everywhere you go, um, and they don't pop out to anybody. 
which means they have lower engagement. So we play to the strengths of our platforms. So for Facebook, for example, really strong images, really strong video. Don't use um, a lot of text in your images. Uh, Facebook doesn't like it and its users don't like it either. But if you're using, uh, say, Twitter or LinkedIn, you can have text in that image um, and those audiences respond well to it. So it's just making those little adjustments, even if you have a similar background image that you're using to kind of tie the campaign together. But playing to those strengths of the platform is really going to help you stand out. Um, and it's just a little step that's going to you know, help nudge you towards success. And then recognizing the special features of each additional campaign. Um, so for example, uh, LinkedIn has a feature where you can actually get automatic form fill information for people responding to an ad. So if we were going back to say that conference audience we talked about earlier, and we want people to uh, you know, give us their information so that we can contact them and kind of nudge them towards that sale of getting a conference at our hotel, uh, we could have that automatic form fill information uh, using LinkedIn. Uh, we wouldn't get that necessarily anywhere else. So it's a great, you know, it's a great feature that we want to take advantage of. Uh, and, and then something like Twitter, where you can target based on very specific hashtags, uh, very specific keywords. Uh, you can target even emojis. There's companies like Toyota that have done this with, you know, they're doing Literally, they're targeting to 100 different emojis, 100 different experiences um, across all their different ads. Um, and it provides this un unique experience to target by actual conversation versus you know, just de demographic or geographic information. Um, so having just knowing your tools kind of inside and out a little bit that way is going to help you um, maximize uh, your impact. And then getting into testing your variables. Um, so for each campaign we do here, uh, we like to have a number of set variables. So three to four images. For the case of this Wonderland example, you can kind of see here we have three different images that we're testing against one another, uh, three different versions of copy that we're testing against one another, and two different headlines. Um, so this is actually going to result in 18 different versions of the ad. Um, so that we can determine exactly the right combination that's going to work um, to actually get those reservations through. Again, this is a little bit more framework up front uh, where you have to create all these individual ads and it might seem like a little bit of a hassle, um, but it pays out because you're going to understand after the campaign, this is the image that people like, this is the copy that people like, and that can help influence additional social campaigns and also digital campaigns and potentially even you know language on your website if people are really responding to something you want to maximize uh, you know the impact of that and then this is an extra step that I know a lot of companies don't do because I see a lot of ads on my phone and on my desktop where people's heads get chopped off all the time mm -hmm. uh, or the ad copy is clipped um, just checking those placements this is super simple uh, once you push something live, um, pull up you know the preview onto uh, your phone, pull it up onto a tablet, pull it up on the desktop, ask other people to check it, make sure it looks okay. Uh, super easy step and it's going to help you from having kind of this embarrassing uh, moment where you're like, oh, my ad was completely clipped off and that's why it wasn't successful. Super easy. And the wrap up point here is just really play to the strengths of the individual platform you're using and the impulses of your audience. Um, recognizing that your audience is gonna behave however they want and don't try to bring them into your framework saying, well, we only want people who do X, Y, and Z in this order. Uh, let your audience tell you how they wanna interact with your brand, how they wanna interact with your ad, uh, what they like, what they don't like, and then just be responsive to that and play to that impulse uh, and you're going to be a lot more successful. All right, so one of the most fun steps of all is to always test and learn. Um, you know, you should be looking at every live campaign as a test. There is a constant stream of data that you can be looking at to determine how all of those factors that you considered in sort of the planning and implementation phase, how that paid off and is coming through in your results. Um, the other important thing to remember is that not all results are created equal. There might be an instance where 
as we were saying before, there might be an instance where let's say LinkedIn has an incredibly expensive cost per click. Um, you know, it's gonna be different than what you have on Facebook. Um, you also wanna consider that some things um, are worth, I guess, overseeing the results. So for example, you might not be converting at the rate you want with a particular ad execution, but the engagement is tremendous and that you know from your UTM codes and things like that, that those people are spending a lot of time on your website, but for some reason that particular ad is not ultimately getting the credit for driving that reservation. So again, just really think through the results that you're seeing um, with a lot of depth. And then everything is subject to optimization. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we've got another checklist that we'll be sending out um, after the webinar. Um, everything should be subject to optimization. Um, you know, there's no sacred cow here. Creative should be up for discussion. The budget, the time of day, the targeting setup, all of that should really be considered when you're optimizing the campaign. Because you simply don't know going in how consumers are going to react or what other exterior forces are doing to impact your campaign results. So definitely think through this checklist. Um, this can be a really great tool to make sure that you're considering every possible factor and what it could be doing to your performance. And then always test and learn. Um, so this gets back to looking at all those additional factors um, and determining what's, being, what's successful in terms of driving clicks and driving conversions over other factors as well. Uh, so in the case of this Wonderland campaign, uh, the image is actually what's winning out and what's actually driving people to click. Um, and we can kind of see this broken out that it's actually almost five times more effective using mm -hmm. the image of the children versus the image of crazy happy family on the beach. So by analyzing this and analyzing it early, we can know, hey, we're gonna, click, we're gonna get rid of all the ads that show happy family because they're way more effective, they're, they're way less effective. Um, so we can just turn all those off and we're turning those learnings into optimizations all the way uh, along. This is a tool we use called Ad Espresso um, that really helps give us a lot of this data. We then have to interpret it, obviously, and we have to weigh it against a lot of different other factors, but it does really help us make comparisons between you know, each individual image, what factors are actually driving conversions over others, and is gonna help um, you know, answer those, you know, those common questions mm -hmm. where somebody's like, well, we don't know why people are clicking here. Is it in the image? Is it the headline? It's really just going to look straight at data uh, without bias and let you know what that information is. And why optimization matters. Uh, so this is uh, an example of some really simple optimizations that can be done to a campaign that can dramatically increase uh, your ROI. So there are a number of uh, individuals when they're setting up campaigns um, where they're like, hey, we're going to kind of test this thing for a month, see how it goes, uh, you know, dip in our toe in the water uh, type language in terms of setting stuff up. And what we're advocating is that once you set up a campaign, you're checking in on this thing two, three, four, five times a week sometimes, which again seems like a hassle, but you're just, you're going in there for sometimes five, ten minutes at a time, making small tweaks that can really, really help mm -hmm. uh, increase your ROI. So this is a before picture. Uh, you can kind of see the ad on the right, what the copy was, uh, image used, obviously, you know, jumping kids because it beat out the crazy family on the beach. Um, and the interesting thing here is even with making no adjustments, there's a positive ROI here of $20,500. So somebody might look at this after a month and be really, really happy with that number. Um, and there's nothing wrong with being happy about that number, but there are little changes that could have even driven that further. So in the case of this example, and this happens uh, with clients all the time, it's just a small tweak in language. Uh, so we just adjusted the copy um, just a little bit here. We changed the call to action, which again, really, really simple optimization to do. And the after effect here, small changes, big gains. We jumped that ROI by about $12,000 just by changing those two things. Um, and this might seem uh, ridiculous that, yeah, that's not actually gonna drive it. It does. Uh, these little tweaks make a difference. Uh, changing out an image a little bit makes a difference. Um, we do this, you know, literally every single day with clients where it's, we're adjusting this over this. Uh, we're leveraging the data that the platforms are giving us and that the different tools we have to analyze are giving us. 
um, and we're making these little bitty changes and we're seeing these huge returns uh, kind of on the back end and seeing just success grow from month after month after month uh, into these campaigns. Um, and integrated reporting can also be a really helpful tool. So at Star, we have recently come certified as a Ninja Cat partner, and it is a really impactful reporting tool that allows us to integrate data in real time through an API and look at all of our campaign data. We can sometimes do it on a dashboard or pull it through reporting, but this allows us to not only look at the data specific to, let's say, Facebook and LinkedIn, but we're able to compare things against each other in a really efficient and straightforward fashion. The benefit that that brings to our clients is that we're able to spend more of our time analyzing the data and finding optimizations as opposed to exporting and formatting charts. So there's obviously powerful reporting that you can have within individual platforms, but you really want to try to find a way to look at it in a very integrated fashion and set up your campaign report so that it focuses on your campaign KPI, so in this instance reservations, and you want to constantly compare everything against that core KPI and set them up to be on an even playing field. Right, and this is just something we would encourage you to do. Um, obviously, yes, we use Ninja Cat here, and it's awesome, um, and if you don't have a partner, we'd be happy to work with you on that, but um, even if you do have a partner or if you're doing this work yourself, um, just integrating everything kind of across platform is going to help you see this kind of holistic view of everything where it's, we might have done something over here on Facebook that actually impacts display ads over here mm -hmm. on completely different platforms. And you're able to kind of see that ripple effect go through and you would never be able to see that um, or make those determinations if you didn't have that integration running. Um, so don't silo off your individual channels push them together, analyze data together. Um, I mean, know that there are different kind of markers for each individual one, but having more data at your disposal uh, to evaluate is really gonna help you out um, in determining where to go next. Um, and to close out this section, it wasn't a waste of time if you learned something. As Michael mentioned, in kind of the setup to the webinar, clients will sometimes say, but social just doesn't work for me. You know, it could be because it just wasn't the right time for the campaign, or it could have been the optimization strategy was off, or the campaign KPI and objectives weren't aligned. So even if a campaign didn't fully achieve the desired goals that you had for it, there's still an opportunity to learn. You can learn, you can dig in deep with integrated reporting or some of the other data sources that we've mentioned and try to figure out why it didn't work. That can set you up for success the next time. So it's really uh, a great opportunity to learn. Right. And this just reminds me, there's like a Thomas Edison quote where he talks about, you know, he spent these different hundreds of different times uh, trying to make a light bulb. And he's like, you know, I just, you know, I found 450 ways that it didn't work. Um, and you can view campaigns kind of that way too, mm -hmm. saying this image isn't going to work. Uh, this copy isn't going to work. And it's going to drive you towards finding exactly what will um, and influencing that down the line. Um, the other point I'd just like to make briefly here um, is that by getting into that optimization that we talked about earlier, if you're evaluating your campaign every few days versus letting it run for an entire month, you can catch something early on um, and say, hey, this campaign, for whatever reason, it's just not working. Um, pump the brakes, cut off that budget so you're not uh, spending it, retool, and then kind of push things back out again and test and learn and test and learn. This is an ongoing process. Um, it's just going to continue to happen. Um, but you're going to find out, you know, some things that, you know, assumptions that you make about your audience might not be true. And your audience is going to continually teach you things as well, uh, which is a good thing. Um, so it's also important to just continue the conversation from your campaigns. Um, so ways that you can do that, as we said, you know, implement learnings from your paid social efforts across all facets of the campaign. So if you're seeing an image or an offer, for example, really perform well on social, implement that into your pay-per-click campaigns or your display campaigns. Really take the opportunity to drive those results across the board. Um, retargeting is also an opportunity that is overlooked by a lot of clients. Um, you can retarget users on social, you can retarget them you know, across the internet. Um, for those who might not be feel familiar with what retargeting is, um, that is another opportunity that is available by placing pixeling and tracking code, um, but it's basically serving ads back to users who have already engaged in a particular action such as visiting your site. Um, so it's a really great opportunity to 
keep your brand or your product or your service top of mind and quite often you'll see retargeting convert and perform at an exponentially higher rate than let's say a top of funnel tactic. Right. Yeah, essentially it's it's a qualified lead in that sense because they've already chosen to engage with your brand. Um, so you're just engaging kind of that smaller core audience. Um, so we would recommend to anybody, in addition to any new campaigns that you're pushing out, to kind of add a budget in for retargeting uh, just mm -hmm. for that you know perspective. So if somebody's buying from you um, and you think that they're you know they're going to be buying from you again, you know if you're a B two C um, you know organization. You want to continue to get that message in front of them and keep yourself top of mind. Um, and from that, you know, test perspective, um, you can really realize that hey, after a week or two weeks is when it makes sense to turn on those ads for individuals. And all that information that's coming back to you is eventually going to kind of teach you exactly how and when to communicate uh, with each of your individual customers. Uh, so thank you everybody for joining us today uh, for this webinar. Uh, it's been great and like I said we'll be continuing this conversation kind of all the way along. Feel free to reach out to either one of us. I'm happy to jam on this topic any day of the week uh, so we can talk and have those conversations and uh, dig in a little bit more especially if there were areas that you know might have gone over your head or you want to dig into a little bit more. Happy to have those conversations. So thank you everybody. Thank you.